Hello, it's August and I'm in my garden and this is about the time that we start to harvest tomatoes in Michigan. And along with the harvest, you'll probably notice that uh, you'll get diseases, especially if you are in humid climates like Michigan or Florida, for instance. And um, a couple of the diseases that you'll run into include septoria leaf spot and early blight. If you're really unlucky in certain years, you may also have late blight, which is something we'll cover in another video because it's really bad. And as your fruit ripens, you may have another disease on the fruit called anthracnose, which we'll also handle in another uh, video. But what I wanted to say about um, early blight and septoria leaf spot, these are defoliating diseases. They always start from the bottom, from material that was left in the soil from previous years and it infects the lower leaves, completes its life cycle, and just keeps on moving up the plant until most of the plant is defoliated. Now, um, what happens is you'll get spots on the leaves, the leaves will turn yellow, then they'll turn brown, and then they'll fall off. And that can affect the overall crop um, if you don't treat them, but it doesn't affect the fruits directly, like say anthracnose does. Now, the way you identify these diseases is septoria leaf spot are many smaller spots on the leaves, usually about an eighth of an inch across, about the size of a BB, and they'll be peppered all over the leaf. Whereas early blight, the spots are up to maybe three eighths of an inch, maybe not quite a half an inch, also brown. But if you look closely at those spots, you'll see a series of concentric rings, and that will indicate that it's early blight. So what do we do about it? Well, once it's there, you can't do anything about it. Uh, it's going to complete its life cycle, but what you can do is prevent further spread of the disease by using preventative fungicides. And if you put them on early enough in the season and continue that process about every seven to ten days, you can really keep the amount of infection to a minimum. Now in terms of what you would use, if you're a conventional gardener, you can use something called daconil, also called chlorothalonil. But if you are more of an organic grower, then you may want to use like neem oil uh, or copper sulfate. And I actually use neem oil and copper sulfate together and it works quite well in terms of preventing further infection. Now there are some things that you need to realize about how likely you are to get these diseases. One is how much humidity is there in the air? How often are you getting rain? When you water in the evening, uh, are you wetting the leaves? And we generally suggest don't water in the evening where you wet the leaves because then the leaves are wet overnight and that encourages the development of, of the disease. Also, another thing is um, how much dew you're having in the morning. Heavy dews can contribute to this disease. If your tomatoes are planted too close together or are on the ground, that also can make a difference. Plants that are in cages tend to take longer uh, to get to the, the infection than plants that are on the ground. And also whether those plants are mulched or not. When you have a straw mulch around the base of the plants where there's a physical barrier between the bottom of the plants and the top of the soil where the spores are, then you can delay the onset of that disease. If you have proper spacing between plants, then air can circulate and dry off the leaves a lot faster after a rain event and therefore decrease the chances of the disease. But if you are in a, a, a humid climate like I am, you're going to get this disease every year, and if you don't want your plants to look terrible by August and September, then you will have to put on preventative fungicides. And the frequency should be between seven and 10 days. Make sure that you get good coverage, spray until you have dripping, get the top and lower sides of the leaves, and be sure, especially if you have an indeterminate type, which tend to be fairly thick growing tomatoes, uh, in terms of leaf tissue that you get toward the inside of the plant also. So those are my tips for today. Um, we will be back with more information on tomatoes and this is Gary. See you later.